Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Thursday, November the 4th of 2021. We begin our time together with a reading from Robert Van De Weer's Celtic Parables. I send low prayers along the ground. These are for Jesus Christ, asking him to heal all people. I send high prayers into the sky. These are for our God in heaven, asking God to bring peace to the world. I send deep prayers into my heart. These are for the Holy Spirit, asking the Spirit to heal and pacify my heart. Our prayers this evening come from the PCUSA uh, Book of Common Worship Daily Prayer. Let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O God of endless light, through our Lord Jesus Christ. In him your light shines in our hearts and reveals the light that never fades. As daylight comes to an end and darkness begins to fall, we thank you for the light of day, created for our work and pleasure, and bless you for the gift of this evening light. All praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this evening is Psalm 115, verses 9 to 18. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord give you increase, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to human beings. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time on and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Our second reading this evening is also Psalm 115, the first eight verses, and will be included in our reading this evening, which comes from Ruth Shue Simmons, Beholding and Becoming, The Art of Everyday Worship. This evening we are sharing let go of control. Though the record shows undoubtedly that my husband Troy is a much better driver than I am, with hardly an accident, parking lot ding or mishap, the fender bender with light posts, sigh, I didn't see the concrete structure the light post sat on, and no ill-timed left-hand turns, I still close my eyes when he's passing other vehicles. It makes no sense, but it's revealing. I like to be in control. Even if my own track record is faulty or untrustworthy, I'm wired to think myself safer with my own hands on the steering wheel. Isn't that what drives our incessant need to know the future and to manage everything in our lives? We call it planning, purposeful and proactive. But if we're honest, it's often our belief that we know better than God and can orchestrate circumstances better than him if only we had access to all variables. I could avoid pain and suffering if I only knew what will happen next. I could avoid relationship conflicts if I could manage others' perceptions of me. I could avoid frustration if I could just make sure my husband does it my way. I could avoid failure if I make sure I make the right decisions. What, are, what we are really saying when we try to control and manipulate the circumstances of our own lives is this. 
I can avoid having to trust God if I can simply trust in myself. We are naturally bent toward believing ourselves to be all wise, all powerful, all capable. We know our own track record and yet we want the reins. If a faulty view of ourselves results in a fatal belief about who is in control, then a right view of God and his sovereignty can shape our hearts to trust him alone. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory, for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Why should the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but do not speak, eyes but do not see. They have ears but do not hear, noses but do not smell. They have hands but do not feel, feet but do not walk. They do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. Psalm 115 verses 1 through 8. The psalmist does not mince words. Our God does all that he pleases. And while we may not consider them idols, our safety nets of control, strategy, manipulation, and wearing ourselves thin, trying to keep all perceptions and plans going our way, well, they fail us and show themselves to be hollow forms of security. Human-made idols that cannot save or secure. When we serve those, we become like them. Friend, when we are tempted to serve the idols of control and self-assurance, let us remember them for what they are, false and deceiving masters. Let's turn instead to our sovereign and faithful God, who does all that he pleases to bring himself glory while he demonstrates his steadfast love. When we place our need for control within God's hands, we become reflections of God's glory and steadfast love. And that dear friends, pleases God very much. I'd like to share the words of the hymn, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter and my soul a thirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, O oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit, clothed immortal, wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. Let us pray. Give us your peace, O God, that we may rejoice in your goodness to us and to all your children and be thankful for your love revealed in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for people who reveal your truth and righteousness. Courage to be bold disciples. Those who show hospitality. Surprises that have blessed us. The unity of the Church of Jesus Christ. Give us your peace, O God, that we may be confident of your care for us and all your children as we remember the needs of others. Especially we pray for friends and relatives who are far away.
neighbors in special need. Those who suffer hunger and thirst. Those who work at night while others sleep. All churches in every denomination within your family. As you have made this day, O God, you also make the night. Give light for our comfort. Come upon us with quietness and still our souls, that we may listen for the whisper of your spirit and be attentive to your nearness in our dreams. Empower us to rise again in new life, to proclaim your praise and show Christ to the world, for he reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you throughout this night, and may strength fill you for the day ahead. Amen. Good night.